Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Today is January 30th and I am picking up right where I left off in the last episode, getting a new value object working called user enter dollars. This is a dollar subclass that is designed to encapsulate and represent the values that the user enters. And the reason we need this is that in doing persistence I discovered that there was no way of handling the case of the user entering weird values, including pennies. Um, so we want to capture all that and so user enter dollars seems like the way to do it. Uh, this is all kind of a big experiment. I don't know if this is going to work. We've spent two episodes on it so far though, about a little less than half an hour. So um, hopefully it's good. If not, we'll be doing some rolling back. Alright, so we just gotten to the point where we were confirming that um, user enter dollars were comparable to valid dollars. Um, so it should be equal to valid dollars. And we should also have it be unequal to valid dollars. Oh, and that should be a sort of false. Which it is. So now let's go ahead and take a look at that in the other direction. I don't know that this really matters. Um, I think that's just going to work from the way it's programmed. Yeah, it does. So I'm going to leave this actually as is, just to make the code a little more understandable. Um, so next, so let's say it should be comparable to valid dollars when equal. Actually, that's what I need to do over here. I need to say it should be comparable when unequal and when equal. Um, when equal and when unequal. Okay. And I want to have a um, similar case of true user enter dollars should be comparable to invalid dollars when valid, so that should be false. So if we say dollars and c dot equals new invalid dollars, that's Oh, that works. That just works. Okay. Um, why does that just work? Well, because then we just look at the backing dollars. So yeah, that's good. Um, which means that the invalid case ought to work just fine as well. Oh, but it's not. Interesting. Oh, no, it should just be true. And this, let's pull this out as a invalid dollars.
or just invalid, I think. And this there. Okay, that's good. Now we need to test that that's going to work going the other direction, which I don't know that it will. Yeah, um, invalid dollars don't equal valid dollars. But we also need the case of um, invalid dollars do equal user entered don't equal valid user entered dollars. So. but they do do equal invalid user equal dollars. Okay, let's comment that second test out for the moment and just see what happens when we run the... Oh, that works fine. Okay. Right, because invalid dollars don't equal anything else. But this one will probably fail. Yeah, invalid dollars do equal invalid or should. Should is better than do and don't because the way the wording reads in the test is more obvious. Because when you get a red bar and it says invalid dollars do equal invalid dollars, is it test failing because they do, or is it test failing because they shouldn't, or they they should and they don't? Um, so using the word should just makes that a lot more clear. So invalid dollars, yeah, we basically say if it's an instance of valid dollars, return true. Um, So here I'm going to say if O is an instance of um, user enter dollars, we're going to return O dot equals this. Otherwise, we'll return that. And that should pass. Good. Um, I think I've gotten everything. If I had a pair partner here, I think this would have gone a little bit smoother. I just kind of approached it in a hacky sort of way. And I don't like the combinatorial explosion that's resulted from having to do all these comparisons. And I think that's just a limitation of Java. Um, I think what we're missing is double dispatch, if I've got my CS terms correct. Um, meaning that I'd like to be able to just have all the equals methods in one place so you could see them all listed out. Um, but, you know, say levy. It, it is what it is. Okay, so now we've got all these different approaches uh, working. Um, yep, so... And we need to say that equal dollars have the same hash code even if string is different. So I'm going to say $1a dot hash code is equal to $1 spaces dot hash code because they are equal. Yeah, and that's failing. And the way I'm going to do the hash code is really simple. I'm just going to uh, pull out the backing value. Let's see, it's capital C, isn't it? Yeah. All 
Okay, good. And it shouldn't blow up when comparing to null. Good. Okay, so now that we've got all of that, Okay, um, now I think we can move back to these other tests, which are a little more substantial, without our equals failing like it did. So let's see what happens. This should pass. Good. Yes, it passes because in our constructor, we're just forwarding on to the parse method. So this should pass. And that sh this should all pass. Okay, that's good. Now for a little refactoring. Um, right now, let's get rid of some of this cruft. Um, right now, our parsing happens inside of dollars, and I want it to happen inside of user enter dollars. So let's go ahead and grab this. And put it inside of here. And that, nothing's changed yet. No, nothing's changed. Now, inside of dollars, we should be able to say return user enter dollars dot parse text and have that work. Yep, that's working just fine. And now, for the trick, I should be able to inline this and magically change everything to use uh, it doesn't like it. Oh, well, no, it's just complaining about that. I think that's going to be okay. Let's see what happens. That didn't work. Hmm. Let's make this private, see what happens. Um, just a couple of complaints here. And of course, here. And now I think we've got a warning that this is unused, which is perfect. Yeah, now we're, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, so now we've moved the parse method into here, and I'm going to make it a private local method. Well, not quite yet. I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, turn it into a private method, it's good, and then do that. Let's call it parse2. There, that should work. And it passes all our tests. Now this can simply return new user enter dollars.
and it should still work. Ooh, it doesn't work though. Interesting. Oh, isn't that interesting? Huh. Well, that surprised me. I think it has something to do with the intricacies. I'm not sure what it has to do with. That's surprising, very surprising. Let's get this back to working again. Okay, well, this, I think we'll have to stop here. I didn't, uh, I have a little timer problem, so I'm not exactly sure how much time I have left. Uh, I think we'll call that good for this episode. Thanks very much for watching, everybody. We'll pick up next time uh, and figure out why that test failed. Thanks a lot. I'll catch you next time.